please be sure to subscribe to the channel to update the fastest and most accurate news. Hello everyone, welcome back to my Royal Life News channel, the story for today is if there was a Best Supporting Country award when it comes to royal history, Australia would win hands down. Whether it's widely known or not, our shores have provided the backdrop for a number of pivotal moments over the decades. It was here that Prince Charles went to school for two terms in 1966, was famously randomly kissed by a bikini-clad woman in 1979 and was where Lady Diana Spencer was hastily whisked by her mother to have a good long think after Prince Charles asked her to marry him in 1981. They stayed in a house near the Molly Mook Golf Course and the teenager, would come in and stand at the Bain Marie, the owner of the local fish shop revealed years later. She'd just buy a popper. She wouldn't make eye contact. There was a fragility about her. A beautiful looking woman, but not a happy one, it was while down under that, two years later, Diana first understood the truly awesome power that came with her new title as Princess of Wales, later saying that after that trip and her rapturous second coming worthy reception, I was a different person. I realized the sense of duty, the level of intensity of interest, and the demanding role I now found myself in. Now it has been revealed that another newbie royal bride also had a profound experience while touring our sunburnt country, one that would set in motion a series of events which contributed to the cataclysmic rupture that was Megzi. In the new must-read royal page Turner The Palace Papers by Tina Brown, out today, the former Vanity Fair editor has revealed that when Harry and Meghan, Duke and Duchess of Sussex followed in his parents' footsteps and toured Australia in 2018, the Duchess had hated every second of it. Let that sink in for a minute, at the time, the reception which Harry, and more to the point, Meghan received in October 2018 when they landed in Sydney was nothing short of rhapsodic. The public and the press were overtaken by Megmania and we, as a nation, felt intimately part of Windsor history when the couple announced they were expecting their first child while here. The whole thing felt like a 21st century love in of epic proportions and Australia responded in kind to what felt like the Sussex exuberant embrace. Remember all those photos from that trip of Meghan beaming as she hugged small children and the moment up with banana bread during a visit to a farm in Dubbo? When it looked like she genuinely reciprocated the outpouring of love and support we, as a nation, were sending her. Turns out, according to Brown, we all got it very wrong, she writes, so, Meghan must have been thrilled with it all, right? No. She apparently hated every second of it, Brown, who in the 90s counted Diana as a friend and whose upper crust connections are impeccable, says that a former palace employee revealed to her that Meghan found the itinerary pointless. She didn't understand why things were set up in that way. Instead of being excited when thousands of people showed up at the Opera House, it was very much like, what's the purpose? I don't understand this, the palace staffer told Brown, who adds that this, being the representational role of the British monarchy and its traditional agenda, rather than the focus on causes she wanted to spotlight. Anyone else feel a tad hoodwinked? While the Sussexes were here, they were given an untold number of gifts including flowers, stuffed animals, posters and baby presents. Thousands of Sydney ciders crammed the Opera House forecourt and waited to see them on their first day with thousands more turned out in the Melbourne Botanical Gardens to catch even a glimpse of them there. Such was the Beatlesque mania which followed them, one fan broke down in tears after Harry hugged her. And yet while we, as a nation, were giving ourselves over to this surfeit of goodwill, the new Duchess was having a profoundly different reaction to it all than her mother-in-law did. Coming face to face with the sort of frenzy royalty inspires in us Aussies, rather than being awed and inspired and proud of her new position and all that came with it, she instead, per Brown, hated every second of it. Brown's claims are similar to a report published by The Times last year which alleged that Meghan commented to her team of the Sydney Siders who had thronged to see the couple at the Opera House, what are they all doing here? It's silly. A source told The Times that the Sussex team explained that they're here because they admire and support a monarch and an institution that you're representing, however, she didn't get it. One thing the former Suits star did reportedly take away from their Australian tour was the idea that she and Harry deserved something of a boost in the royal pecking order. 
Brown writes, it was head-turning for Meghan to experience the full-throttle motorcade pairing, outrider grooming, crowd-roaring adulation of a popular young royal on a tour planned to the last teacup by the palace machine. Meghan seemed to interpret the success as a call for Brand Sussex to be elevated in the palace hierarchy. However, instead of getting the kudos that she reportedly felt they deserved, Meghan instead, felt snubbed that there was no particular display of palace appreciation. As a former aide told Brown, there is often a massive anti-climax when you get back from a royal tour. You're just back into your norum life. The Queen would send the principals a note after a trip but you don't come back to a ticker tape welcome. In hindsight, it was the Sussex trip to Australia and South Pacific that marked the very clear turning point between the fawning adoration of the couple that led up to and followed their wedding and then the much more toxic chapter which followed, during which their relationship with his family and the media irretrievably broke down. Last year, Harry told Oprah Winfrey, to see how effortless it was for Meghan to come into the family so quickly, in Australia, and across New Zealand, Fiji and Tonga, and just be able to connect with people. You know, as we talked about, she was very much welcomed into the family, not just by the family, but by the world, certainly by the Commonwealth. And we did Harry, we really did. But it's a bitter pill to swallow to learn that while we were enthusiastically welcoming your wife, she allegedly, hated that tour. I suppose it's a moot point though, these days. Having quit working royal life to talk about creating content and bask in the supposed glow of their new emancipated lives, having to deal with an entire country's slightly hysterical adoration and shaking hands with a governor general here and there is no longer something they have to submit themselves to. Shame. With Netflix having this week axed one of the only two shows they have announced in nearly two years and as part of their reported $140 million deal, a spot of public applause might not go astray right now. That is all for today news, please make sure to leave your comment and subscribe the channel below for more news update.